On this episode, I'll be flushing out the coolant system and replacing all the hoses on a Jaguar XJS V12. Welcome back to Loma for Classic, and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content, like this 1991 Jaguar XJS V12. And it's time to replace the coolant in this car. It's been in there a few years since it's time to just flush it all out, and I thought I'd replace all the hoses when I'm at it. I'm not really sure when they were replaced last, but some of them are starting to you know, look a little soft and it's a lot better just to replace all the hoses and having one burst and that will basically just total the engine for you because one thing these cars cannot take is being overheated but if everything is working well you know the coolant system is good you don't have any blockage in the radiator and everything else is working as it should these cars don't overheat yes they run kind of hot sometimes but they don't overheat if you want to learn more about overheating i already made a video about finding out and trusting your gauge so I'll put a link to that up above and down below so you can check that out if you haven't already. So in this video I'm going to be replacing the coolant and we're going to go through all the hoses like I said and I'm going to completely flush out the system. If you look in your owner's manual, Jagger recommends that when you replace the coolant, which they recommend that you do every two years, you empty out the coolant system, then you close up the system again, you fill up the whole coolant system with plain water, and you run the engine for five or ten minutes, and you warm it up a little bit, and you, you know, empty that out, and then you put coolant in again. However, many of these cars sit around for a long time, um, and I mean, they're old. They're 30, 40 years old. So there could be a lot of debris and dirt in these coolant systems, so it's really good to flush out the radiator, the block, and the heater core separately, that way you know where there is dirt and also you won't move dirt from one place to another. So I'm going to show you how you can easily do it with a garden hose. Just flush everything out. That way you can see that, well maybe you have a really clean block and but your heater core is really dirty. So maybe you might consider getting a new heater core or maybe you see that there's just so much dirt coming out of your radiator that you start considering, well maybe I should get a new radiator. But I'll show you that later in this video. I will try to do everything uh, in detail like I normally do, so this will probably be split up in two videos because it's kind of a big job replacing all the coolant hoses on the V12. There's a lot of them, it's a lot of tight space, and also flushing everything out, and also takes time when I try to explain everything. So the really important thing is, like in your manual, is to replace your coolant pretty often. It says two years in the manual, but I think nowadays if you're using long life coolant and coolant has gotten better, you can probably stretch that to four or five years, um, but no more than that because after a while the antifreeze and the coolant just loses the ability to um, um, basically the corrosion inhibitor in there. You're not really using antifreeze so it won't freeze because most of us you know, live somewhere warm and keep this thing in a warm garage and doesn't really use it in winter. But the good thing is, I mean, if you use antifreeze then it won't freeze, but you need to use in warm climates as well because of the corrosion inhibitors. You don't want any of those delicate parts inside of this completely aluminum engine to corrode and then you'll have a lot of problems. Let's head on over to the car and we'll start draining out the coolant and then I'll show you how, which hoses you need to remove and then we'll just start flushing everything. As you can probably hear, the first step is of course to drain the coolant system. I did the same thing that I did with my XJ6 and just assembled that if you remember. I cut the lower radiator hose the low radio hose is the black thing you can see all the way down there. It's a little hard to see now, but I will be removing these hoses up top here so you can see down there more clearly and I'll put a bright light down there. So there's made an incision in there and I put a screwdriver in the hole just to open it up a bit and now it's draining at a reasonable level. Probably not making that big of a mess, hopefully. It's draining into a container down here as you can see. Made a little bit of a mess there on the side, that's not bad. So that container is big enough to hold the whole coolant system in one of these cars. And the great thing about it, using one of those containers is it has a lid. And you put that lid on, you can safely move it to the side, and you can leave it in your workshop, and it's not an open container of coolant. Because coolant is poisonous. So, um, and the odd thing is that animals really, really like the taste of coolant. It's sweet to them, they really like the taste, and they consume it, and sadly they die. And I mean, I live, once again, on a farm, but we have cats and dogs and lots of other things that somehow make, somehow they sometimes make their way into the workshop, and of course, you don't want them to die. 
So when I'm done with this, I can put a lid on it, move it to the side. So sometimes then when I'm draining coolant out of a car, like I'm just replacing a small hose or just replacing something, and I want to reuse the coolant because maybe it's pretty much brand new, I can leave it in that container, pour it into bottles, pour it back into the vehicle. Or like in this case, when I'm replacing the coolant, I can pour that into the bottles that I get my new coolant in when I pour that into the engine, and then bring that to my uh, uh, local recyclers and they can dispose of it in a proper way. So that's very important. Don't just pour coolant out on the ground. It is poisonous and you might kill a little animal, some little critter. So I'm just gonna wait for that to drain now. Uh, just drain all of that. I'm just gonna leave here because that noise is it's not that pleasant to listen to, a bunch of dripping water. I'll let that drain completely and then when you come back we're gonna start losing all the hoses up top here. We're going to work our way from the top to the bottom, get everything off, and then we'll work from bottom to top when we fit all the new hoses. After a while, when most of the coolant has drained out, I like to open the expansion tank, the cap on there, to let some more air into the system. And then the rest of it will pour out a little faster. If you do this in the beginning, you'll probably make a little bit bigger of a mess, but when it's not that much left in the system, like right now, you can do that and help get the last of it out. With the coolant system completely empty, the next step is to start removing some hoses. I'm going to remove a few of them now just so I can flush out the system. I want to flush out the radiator, the block, and the heater core. And to do that, I'm going to remove both of the top hoses. I'm also going to remove the bottom hose that goes from the bottom of the radiator up into the water pump. And I'm going to remove the hoses at the back that go to the heater matrix in the car. And we have the heater valve over there, so I'm going to remove those as well. I'll leave the rest in place and we'll remove those later. So I will remove those now and then when we come back, we'll get ready to flush out the radiator, the block, and the heater core. It's a little while later and I removed all those hoses along with another one I forgot to mention. You can see here, there's no longer the fill point there. I removed the whole bypass as well. Just forgot to mention that before. I've laid everything out on the table here, sort of where it goes on the engine to try and show it in an easier way. So here you have the left and the right top hose, where they connect to the thermostat house, right below there you have the bypass. This is where this connects, so this technically sits you know, in front of it, but I'm just laying it out like here. So you have two short hoses there, one there, one there for the bypass. And then you have a hose here as well, it goes up into the block or right above the water pump. And you have a hose that goes from the bypass here, basically an air bleed, over to the expansion tank. You have the lower radiator hose that goes from this side of the radiator, like this, and then straight up into the water pump, pretty much right below here, over here. Then you have the hoses in the back for the heater, so you have here, into the heater valve, out of the heater valve, into the heater core, out of the heater core, down back, and then it reconnects to the system, basically where this hose is, so where it connects back from the lower radiator hose and goes back up into the water pump. So that's the normal flow on one of these engines. I'm gonna go over to the other side just so I can explain on the engine. So before I flush out, out the engine, I kinda of wanna explain the normal water flow. Let's see here. So you have a thermostat housed on this side and the one on the other side that we looked at before. So the water goes from you know, in the block, out here, into the top of the radiator on both sides gets cooled by the radiator and then it's really hard to see but where my hand is down there there is the outlet of the radiator so that goes snakes down here to the water pump and sort of that connection that you're seeing down there that's where it connects up onto the water pump then it goes back through the whole system and it goes out again and then you have well the heater valve is over here we saw the hose over here before goes to the valve, second valve, goes over here, and then it's in and out, and then that connects to here, and that's a hard line that goes, and then it connects down here into the radiator. So that's basically how the water normally flows through the engine. So when I'm gonna flush it, I wanna back flush it, because, you know, it's used to having the water just going in one direction the whole time, so there will be some debris and sediment that have settled with sort of the current of the water. So if you flush it the other way, you have a good chance of knocking some of that loose and having it come out. 
So I mentioned I'm going to flush out the radiator, the block, and the heater core. So I'm going to do all that backwards. So to flush out the block backwards, I'm going to go from the thermostat with water in that way and it coming out of the water pump instead of the other way around. But I'm going to do it through the bypass over there because the thermostats you know, are going to be closed. So water through that way and then it comes out of the water pump down there. For the radiator, I'll take from the outlet here, water in here. It's going to come out here and the other side. So I'm going to, you know, hold my hand here so it comes out that side as well. Clean that off. And the exact same thing here. You know, where the outlet is, that's where I'll put water in. It will come out the other way. And hopefully, we'll see a little bit of debris at first. Well, I mean, hopefully, we won't see that much debris, but we'll probably see a little bit of debris and then it will be perfectly nice and clear. So I'm going to grab that hose now, set up the camera, and I'll show you how I like to do it. I forgot to mention that since I'm working inside, I've set up this really big container under the engine just to catch any of that water. So I'll keep an eye on that when that gets full. I'll pull it out and empty it out. Just because I'm in here, I don't want to fill my workshop with too much water. I uh, will be running my dehumidifier uh, for a while, even though because you know, I already did spill some on the ground just to get the humidity out of here, but it's really hot outside, so I'm just going to open up the door and most of it should go away. But if you're doing this outside, that's not really a problem, but I'm doing it all inside, so that's why I've set up this little thing underneath. And it's a good tip if you want to get just get one of these big ones. It's just a big storage container that you usually can buy at many retailers to store clothes under your bed. And if you lift up the car a little bit, they usually fit right underneath. So I've turned on the water now, and I have the hose here in my hand. Just bend it over. So I'm going to start with the radiator, and I've set the, up the camera so you can see that outlet clearly. Don't really want to have the water too close to the camera, but I'm going to try and film this as best as I can. So I'll put the hose into where the bottom hose of the radiator usually goes. And I mean, put my hand over there because it is, you know, lots of it probably going to pour out. And then I'll put my hand over this one to get it to go out the other side of the radiator. So let's see how well that goes. And as you can see, you're getting a flow out of the top side of that radiator. And you see it's a little brown, but it's not looking too bad. I'm having a hard time holding my hand over it. This is sort of the biggest, most difficult one to do. But you see it's already getting a bit more clear. So I'm going to let it run for a little bit longer until it gets pretty much completely clear. And I'm going to alternate sides a bit, so I'll let go on this side, let it pour out here as well. And put my hand over that side. And yeah, it's looking pretty nice and clear on this side now as well. I'm going to do another 30 or 40 seconds or so of this. And now that's looking really nice and clear, so I'll turn off the water. And see how much is in my container if it's already full. Have a look. There's still some space in it, it's not completely full yet, so I'm gonna take the hose and just flush it out the normal way a little bit. And I'm gonna do this side as well. Turned off the water and as you can hear it's still pouring out of the radiator a bit. When I flushed the other way, I'm not sure if you can see on camera, but from the lower part of the radiator on that side, you could see some um, brown stuff coming out. So it's definitely getting some debris out of there. Um, so it's really worthwhile doing it both ways. Now I'm going to do the block and try and film that without getting the camera too wet. Fortunately, I don't have a waterproof camera. It's the block now and then we're going to do the heater core last. Since the thermostats are still in this engine, to flush the block, I'm going to use where the bypass hose goes. So I'll shove the hose in there and it should come out of the water pump. So let's get the hose in there. And I think I can already. Yeah, it's going to come up. There we go. Now I can hear it coming out of the bottom of the water pump. It's going to be really hard for me to show that on camera without getting the camera soaking wet, but. Let's 
actually looking really nice and clean. So far it's only clean water coming up. I'm going to let it run just for a little bit on this side and then I'll do the other side as well. And now I'm going to flush it from the other side. Last but not least, I'm going to flush out the heater core. The inlet is at the bottom and the outlet is at the top normally, so I'm going to flush it backwards. So I'll flush it from the top to the bottom. I'll set up an extra light here so you guys can hopefully see. It's really tight down there and once again, I'm going to try not to get any water on my camera, but let's see. And also, try and get the least amount of water in the engine bay. And there's a little bit of debris coming out there. It's not bad. And as you can see down there, Hopefully, you can see that you get a nice clear stream of water, so there's no dirt debris in the heater core, which is really good news. Now I'm happy that everything is nice and clean inside. The radiator, the block, and the heater core have been fully flushed. By the end of it, I was only getting nice clear water out of it, so I'm really happy and satisfied that everything is nice and clean inside. And I'll have no cooling issues with this engine. Took some rags and just dried up any area where I spilled water, because you will spill water someplace, but just try to be careful and not get it everywhere. If you get in certain places and you want to, you know, make sure that all the water is gone, like in a connector or something, you can actually use something as simple as WD-40. In case you didn't know, WD stands for water displacing, so water displacement formula number 40. This was actually invented in the 50s for the, I believe, the Atlas cruise missiles uh, to use as a coating on the, between the fuel tanks uh, just to not get corrosion in there, and they use it in some of the electrical connections as well. So, Next time you're using the spray, just think of that, that it's actually meant for top secret nuclear missiles. So that's kind of cool. So the next step is to continue removing all of the rest of the hose to get them all out of the way. And once those are all out of the way, I'll show you all the new hoses and then all of that can go back onto the engine. And that's it for part one. Like I said, we'll split this video up just because it will be way too long otherwise. And it takes a while to explain all of this and to change to all the hoses. So I'm gonna now remove the rest of the hoses in the system then I'll lay them all out on the table again and I'll lay all the new hoses next to them so you can see which ones goes where. And that's something I really recommend. It's really easy to compare the old ones to the new ones. You know where everything goes. There's a lot of bends and angles and they're all kind of funky looking weird hoses. But if you haven't done it before, it's really easy just to take one hose off at a time and have a look at it and make sure that you have a new one that will fit back in the same place. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel and you really want to see the next video or other videos, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification and you will be notified whenever I upload a new video, which is twice a week. So until next time, I'm Adam and this was Lumify Classic. I'll see you soon.